Check this shit out. A lot of people, myself included until recently, probably didn't know that there were multiple Indiana Jones games released on the NES. The Temple of Doom game was fairly common, but the Last Crusade sequel wasn't released until 1991, when most folks had moved on to the Super Nintendo. What's even stranger is that two years later, an entirely different company released an entirely new game for the NES with the exact same title. If you watch my NES games with alternate cover art video, I actually mentioned these two already and went over some of the subtle visual differences between the two cartridges. That's actually my favorite video I've made so far, so if you haven't seen it and you want to watch me analyze some bizarre Nintendo variants, I've linked to it in the description. Anyway, there's more to these games than just the labels. Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade was released on the NES in 1991 and was published by Taito. A separate and completely different Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade was released in 1993 and was published by Ubisoft. To this day, I still have no idea why this happened, but my best guess is that by this point in the NES's lifespan, Nintendo was more focused on the Super Nintendo and Game Boy, and the old seal of quality was just slipping a bit. Well, let's give them both a whirl and see what we're working with. Starting with the Taito version, the introduction has lots of images and text detailing stuff straight from the movie, which is awesome. Also, while you expect an Indiana Jones game to have the iconic John Williams theme, which it does, this game also has a surprisingly funky soundtrack that kind of reminds me a lot of the music from DuckTales. Oh, there it is. This game was composed by soundtrack god Tim Fullen, music hero of such titles as Solstice, Pictionary, Silver Surfer, and many more. Anyway, when the game starts, there's some introduction followed by a choice which allows you to choose between multiple paths. Cool! If you pick Chasing the Cross, you'll end up on a ship where the screen moves with you to simulate a tanker floating. And while I appreciate the thought put into it, I don't think the developers realize just how nauseating this is. You fight a ton of tiny enemies that never stop coming. You'll mash at them relentlessly, but while you think you're hurting them, you're actually dueling with your true enemy, random hit detection. It's a total 50-50 Rock'em Sock'em Robot Showdown of zero strategy or execution. So which one has the cross? I've been across this whole boat, killed everyone I can, tried all these doors that don't open, and hmm. Turns out this is really just setting you up for a series of confusing premises with little context. Here, for instance, when it says one of them has the cross, it means kill 30 of them and the cross will appear. Just a quick keep fighting till you find the cross would have gone a long way. Also, the note from Marcus says the cross of Coronado is in Portugal. It's on a ship called the Coronado, to which Indy exclaims, I've been searching for it all my life. So he never thought to look on that boat with the same name? Not so clever, Dr. Jones. If you choose going to Venice instead, you're immediately faced with one of those slide image puzzles where one of the tiles is missing and you have to unscramble the image. I truly can't think of anything less fun to do in a video game. And just to make it worse, there's a timer. I gotta say though, as crappy as the graphics are in this, I kinda love the image at the bottom of Indiana sorting out the puzzle. It kinda looks like he's DJing. After that, it's even more options. Look for Marcus or rescue Sean Connery. Marcus is in a tank and you need to beat up a certain amount of Nazis before you reach the cliff. It's here that I discovered that select brings out the whip, which kills enemies in one hit. What the fuck? Where was that option on the Coronado boat mission? Why not just start him with the whip? That makes no sense! If you ditch old dad and go straight for the grail, you'll go to a version of the crossword Jehovah puzzle from the movie, but they decide to skip the whole they spelled it with an I and not a J thing. This is pretty rad, but I way overestimated my ability to navigate this without consulting the diary. And plunge. Oh damn, Indy even called me out on it. Game over? Shit. Well, I battled my way back from where I was, and I decided to go with the Rescue Indiana Senior option instead. Indy's dad is in a maze of a castle, and I can't play this game anymore. 
This shit all looks the same, the doors just lead to identical locations, and the mashing karate battles from the boat are back. I'm lost, bored, and I just can't imagine things are going to get any better. Overall, the title version does a great job incorporating loads of elements from the film, way more than you usually see in a licensed game, but unfortunately it fails to make an actually enjoyable experience. Then there's the other version. Right off the bat, you'll notice that the Ubisoft Last Crusade looks real weird. Everything is rendered in three tan colors, and all the sprites have a strange outline to them. The music from the film is here, which is great, and it definitely feels like an Indiana Jones game, just a really heartbreakingly crappy one. My first thought was, hmm, was this a Game Boy game? And, yep, it was. If you watched my cliffhanger review, you may recall me making a similar claim then, based on the overly simplistic graphics. And, well, look, here's the Game Boy version. <sighs> At some point, I'll make a video collecting these weird Game Boy games lazily released on the NES, like Lion King, Paperboy 2, and others. Anyway, in the Ubisoft Last Crusade, you navigate a few levels, fighting bad guys, jumping over obstacles, and yeah, the usual. Yet again, you don't have a whip, not even when you press select. Instead, you just waddle around, awkwardly punching dudes in the scrote. You have a life bar, but everything hurts you, and it's near impossible to avoid damage while fighting the massively overpowered gun-wielding enemies. To say this game is a rough playthrough is an understatement. It looks like shit, it sounds like shit, it plays like shit. It's a trifecta. So that's all I got. I feel like I'm really half-assing it here by not playing more levels from each of these and showing y'all all that I can, but honestly, there are other long play videos out there that already do that in depth. The best I can give you is this. In my opinion, these are both two of the worst games on the NES. The title version at least has the amazing music, excellent parallels to the movie story, and ambitious design to complement its supreme mediocrity, but the Ubisoft version is pure trash. Just a weak cash grab effort in every way a game can be. The most interesting thing about these games is just the bizarre little footnote that they occupy in the NES's history as the only fraternal but not identical twins. Believe me or not, the decision is up to you. You must choose. But choose wisely. <laughs>